everyone! In today's video I'm going to be going through my updated 2019 A-level psychology predictions for paper 2. I say this in every video but I'm going to say it again. Please don't just revise what I say within this video. Please do make sure you revise everything. Just use this as more of a checklist to see what you do still need to revise and what you're quite confident on. So my predictions within this video haven't actually changed too much from the first video but I thought it was quite useful to see what was in the 2019 AS paper 2 for some of the different sections. What was in the 2019 AS paper for this section? You had a cognitive tick box question, a question on the limitation of the cognitive approach, a social learning theory application question, and then your 12 mark question on the biological approach. What do I think have come up in the 2019 paper? You've got WUNT, and then you've also got the idea of psychology as a science, whereby Watson and Skinner started conducting lab studies and really bringing in some scientific rigour to psychology. I think we haven't really seen this one so much in the past, so it's a good one that could come up, and it does underpin psychology as we know it today. Next, you've got the cognitive approach. So within this, you've got your theoretical models, which are your working memory model, your computer models, the role of the schema, and then cognitive neuroscience. So that has allowed for the study of brain structures, which in turn has allowed for the development of different imaging techniques of the brain. So I think this one's quite likely as we haven't really seen cognitive neuroscience so much in the past. It's definitely an emerging thing and it links very nicely to biopsychology also. Next we've got the humanistic approach. So this did come up as a 16 mark question in 2017, but it wasn't seen last year. Within this you've got the idea of free will, self actualization and then Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You've got that idea of needing to have congruency between the ideal self and the actual self. And finally, you've got the development of client-centered therapy. Next, you've got the social learning theory. So that's your process of attention, retention, motor reproduction, and then motivation. Within this, you also need to know what vicarious reinforcement is, what identification is, and also Bandura's social learning theory study using the Bobo doll. Finally, I've just put on here about a comparison question. So of course we did see this last year, but from now on I probably wouldn't rule this out because it is one that AQA might like to have because it does incorporate your knowledge of two approaches as opposed to just one. I've also made a short video on how you might like to structure a comparison question. And then at the end of the video, there is a table you can use as your comparison of the approaches. Next, you've got biopsychology. So within the AS paper, this only comes into paper 2 within the approaches section, and so the question there was on the endocrine system. So what was in the 2018 A-level paper? There was the role of the somatic nervous system, the labelling of a neuron, a question on synapses, a question on sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, and then the question on the role of the exogenous sidegabers. So looking what was in the 2018 paper, it was very AS content heavy, so this year they could take a bit of a turn and go for some more of the A-level content. So what do I think could come up in the 2019 paper? You've got your localization of function, whereby within this you just need to know about your motor, somatosensory, visual and auditory centres, as well as the language areas of the brain. Next, you've got plasticity and functional recovery. So within this, you need to know about plasticity and the research into this. For example, you've got Maguire's taxi driver's study. And then you also need to know what happens to the brain during recovery. So your different processes of recovery. For example, axonal sprouting. Next, you've got investigating the brain. So for this, you just need to know your four different techniques. So for example, your fMRI, EEGs, ERPs and post-mortem examinations as well as strengths and weaknesses of all of these different processes. Next, you've got your circadian, ultradian and infradian rhythms. I think of everything on this list, this is probably the most likely to come up. So you've got your circadian rhythm, which is your sleep-wake cycle. The ultradian rhythm is those stages of sleep. And then your infradian rhythm is, for example, your menstrual cycle or seasonal affective disorder. I've also just put on here about lateralization and split brain research. I think of the two, split brain research is probably more likely, and this is that quite complicated procedure by Sperry, so just make sure you're clear on the procedure and then those key findings also. Finally, I've put on here just about synapses and neurotransmitters, so this is the kind of thing that can show up every time but just worded slightly differently, so always make sure you're clear on the process of synaptic transmission 
as well as the different neurotransmitters. Next, you've got research methods. So what was in the 2018 paper for this section? You had your purpose of pilot studies, what is qualitative data and give an example of this, what are investigator effects, random sampling, content analysis, testing for reliability, so your inter-rater and test retest, a construction of a bar chart, you had to make a consent form, there was counterbalancing, you had to identify the type of design used and why, so that was your repeated measures design, the problems with this type of design, comparing means and standard deviations, the 95% confidence level, and then the use of control groups. So what do I think could come up in the 2019 paper? You've got your sign test, which is your only statistical test you need to know how to conduct. You may also have to design an experiment. So in 2017, there was a question on designing an observation, which I have got a video on, but this time you may need to design an experiment. You've got those features of a science. So for example, a question could come up whereby you have to discuss the evidence for and against psychology being considered a science. I think this one is quite likely. We haven't seen it before, so they could throw in that kind of essay question into the research methods section. You may also need to create a hypothesis. You, there may be a question on different sections of a scientific report. So within that, you've got your abstract, your introduction, your method, results, discussion, and then a question on referencing could come up. You may need to work out if the results of a stats test are significant. So we did see this in 2017. You may also need to justify the use of a particular stats test. So this was a question in paper one, but it could come up again, perhaps less likely. You also may need to talk about type one and two errors. So there was a question on this in 2017. You may also need to talk about ways of improving reliability, the evaluation of case studies, ethical issues, so psychology in the economy, which did come up in paper one to do with the role of the father, but I wouldn't rule this out. You've also got that idea of peer review and the purpose and strengths of this, which we did again see in 2017. There will always be questions which test your math skills. So this time we could see a percentage increase or decrease question. So just make sure you're clear on that. And then finally, I've just put on here about construction of a graph. And this time around, it could be a histogram, which is fairly different to a bar chart. So just make sure you're clear on how you would construct this type of graph. So of course, literally anything in research methods could come up. So I'd more use this list as a way of identifying your key strengths and weaknesses and see also what you need to revise. I just wanted to say a huge good luck to all of you. I'm so glad it seems like paper one went well for most of you. Again, I said it at the start of the video and I'm going to say it again. Please don't just use what I said to revise. Please do revise everything. I could be completely wrong for paper two. It could go either way. But again, good luck everyone.